When I was a kid, I remember these movies of the week about uh, young people who were uh, wrapped up in cults and their parents had to uh, kidnap them and get them away from the cult leader and then they'd be deprogrammed, right? You remember these stories? Well, a similar story was just highlighted in the New York Post. It was about a young woman named Annabella Rockwell. She had to be reprogrammed. But the cult was, well, something a little bit different than when we were kids. The cult was a liberal arts college in the Northeast, Mount Holyoke College. And Annabella Rockwell, she made it through on the other side. She's telling her story now and she joins us. Annabella, thank you for joining us on this. Larry, thank you so much for having me. Well, you know, is it overstating the case that what happened to you in college and how you were sort of inundated with this whole new outlook on the world, is it fair to compare that to a cult? I think the way that I was so devout to these beliefs is cult-like, yes. And I, I, I say brainwashing, and I don't say it lightly because I really do feel that my thoughts weren't my own. And the way I highlight the difference between how I feel now versus how I was then is that I used to just react emotionally and I didn't have control over it. And now I'm able to hear things, hear different opinions and pause and think and process and then formulate my own ideas. Okay. Well, and by the way, I want to let everybody know it's a, a happy, happy, happy ending. Not only did Annabelle uh, Rockwell make it on the other side and sort of cleanse herself from the woke ideology, she's now the development director for Prager U, which, of course, you know, is the brainchild of our colleague here at Salem, Dennis Prager, uh, and uh, incredible amount of educational videos about uh, patriotic themes, conservative ideas, not even conservative ideas, just reason and logic. And uh, so I, I love the fact that you're associated with PragerU. In fact, were those PragerU videos in any way um, uh, part and parcel to you sort of coming out to the other side here? Thank you so much for your support of PragerU. They were absolutely instrumental. So the way it happened was 2020, I remember being kind of in a silo in my social media. Everything was, you know, no justice, no peace, riot is your first amendment, burn it down, all the black squares. And I remember finally waking up to this feeling like it's very hypocritical. And I had actually worked in progressive politics. So my whole feed after college was very, very progressive, very liberal, and there were no differing opinions. And actually in that space, a PragerU video popped up into my feed. Yeah. And this video was, are the police racist? And I watched it and in the first 40 seconds, it dismantled everything I thought I knew. Yeah. So l let's talk through exactly what happened here. Uh, your parents, I, I looked at the tuition costs at Mount Holyoke, it ain't cheap. Your parents <laughs> send you away to this college to, to get you know your proper Northeast liberal arts education. And I bet you any money there are a lot of people watching right now who have experienced this. Maybe they just experienced it at Thanksgiving. Their kids come home from college and suddenly they seem like a different person. In fact, they're quite aggressive and they start challenging their parents on their political beliefs and their, even their faith-based beliefs. Is that what you did? Did you come home and start getting in your parents' face? That is exactly what I did. Oh. <laughs> I started to fight them on everything, you know, that this country is racist, that, uh, you know, men are oppressors, that it's a patriarchy. I tried to tell my mom she didn't understand that as a woman she's been oppressed and she would look at me cross. I'd like, I've done everything. I've empowered you. You've accomplished so much. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You haven't been deprived of opportunities. And I also challenged their faith as well. I made fun of it, which is very disrespectful. Um, and I, I, I think I was really encouraged to challenge everything they stood for. Like it was my duty. What, what influenced you? What, what got you to that point? Was it your professors? Was it your peers? Did they, did they literally put pressure on you and suggest plant these seeds with you that you should go home and get in your parents' face and start pushing them in another political direction? It was a combination of both. I, I try not to put too much emphasis on my peers only because they were also young and green and eager to learn when they go to school. I definitely think the social climate at the school was very um, social justice heavy. That being said, the professors absolutely infused these ideas of you know, the patriarchy and that this country was founded on racism and there was no space for anyone to object. I remember conservative students would raise their hands and be like, that's not true, or I don't think this, and they would totally get dismissed. So the professors didn't create a space for discourse, even though you're supposed to be, where Mount Holyoke was one of the most diverse colleges in the country, but diversity of opinion is not a priority. And that's 
for colleges all over the United States now. You know, I just happen to have gone to Mount Holyoke, but I think I'm speaking pretty generally now for for the United States. Yeah, I think I, absolutely. And by the way, I read your story. 2016 presidential election, you supported Hillary Clinton. What, tell me about how devastating that loss must have been. And, and did that what did that do to you? And did it actually radicalize you even more after that election? So I didn't just support her. I actually worked on her campaign. Oh, <laughs> I wow. I was a field organizer in, Virgi in Virginia. And yes, I remember falling asleep in the campaign office as we waited for the results to come back in and then turning on my screen and seeing that she had lost and just feeling so heartbroken. And I really felt like it was an attack on women specifically. Like I couldn't understand that people, you know, could disagree with Hillary Clinton. I just I I felt that she was right about everything and I and I didn't understand that people that didn't vote for her saw her as a person first and a leader and a politician first. They didn't see her as a woman first and I think I was so trained to see her as like female leader. Yeah. You know and and that's one of the differences and changes now. I I think what's interesting about your story is it was the summer of 2020 that sort of turned things around for you or sort of really sort of exposed what was going on on the left. I find that interesting because the Black Lives Matter riots and protests and violence that stemmed from the George Floyd murder in Minneapolis, that became such a trigger point for so many other college students uh, who came home that summer and started confronting their parents over their politics, uh, over race issues. Uh, they, they took marching orders from college just like you had years before, but the Black Lives Matter movement actually had the opposite effect on you. Talk to me about that. I think it's fascinating. <laughs> It is fascinating. Um, and in 2018, when I ended up moving down to Florida and reconnecting with my family, I at the time was working on the Andrew Gillum campaign. That's what brought me back to Florida. So that was a very progressive campaign. And I think at that same time as when I did make the lifestyle changes of humbling myself, you know, admitting that maybe I wasn't right about everything, also not drinking anymore, so being very clear headed. It was a period of time that I was just a little bit removed from the dialogue. And then in 2020, it just it was hard not to see the reality of it, the hypocrisies. Why are we burning down businesses in the name of empowerment and justice? It doesn't make sense. And you know, I think 2020, it it radicalized people in a lot of ways. I think it changed minds. I think it reinforced beliefs. Yeah. No. Yeah, the whole the whole uh, fiery but peaceful thing. You weren't buying it. You suddenly saw through that fog, and uh, and God bless you for it. What advice can you give to parents? I mean, did were you were they patient with you? Were they were they adamant? Were they did they try to sort of what was their approach? How did they actually eventually get you to sort of reimagine and relearn what you had already known? Larry, we're talking about years here. I mean, this was a long process. The whole process, I would say, was about seven years. You know, I started really believing in these things when I was 20 and then didn't really switch until 2020 and I was 27 at the time. So my parents were patient, but they are persistent. I think it's very important to, you know, before kids go away, reinforce your values. But if you're experiencing this with your children, that they're coming home and they're fighting you, do not yes them to death. You know, my parents fought me and it was at the risk of our relationship being tense. And I think that it's important to approach these situations with love and understanding and also remind your kid like, well, we used to think this or you, you used to believe this and we still believe this. Why can't you respect that? Right. And maybe push your kid to show you some respect in discourse and not and not fight. I mean, my parents just didn't give up and it was kind of a delicate dance, right? Because they don't want to lose me, but they also know that I wasn't acting like myself. You know, I had I had never identified as, let's say, a feminist or an environmentalist. And I kind of bought into a lot of ideas really quickly. And that was also very alarming to my family that I was saying all these things all of a sudden with so much conviction that I had never said before. It just didn't really make sense. So they were able to see like, that's not who she is. And you know, I'm not saying that everyone needs to be conservative, but no. you know your you know your kids, you know your kids, and they shouldn't just change so drastically overnight. Right. It, it doesn't make sense. And your parents are not the enemy because you, even if you do disagree on politics, and uh, gosh, what a story, Annabella Rockwell. I hope we can talk about it again further and get more <laughs> details, but we're out of time. Uh, in the meantime, uh, go to PragerU, check out all those videos, and help out what Annabella is doing now. More to come on O'Connor tonight. Thank you.